Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Fallout 4. And now, I thought we should cover some of the new Nuka World DLC teaser stuff. Because, hey, let's face it, no other YouTubers have touched this yet. Ha 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 ha. Now, because we only have, like, 30 seconds of footage to work with here, first of all, I'm going to just talk about what I want in this DLC. Then we're going to do a quick teaser or trailer deconstruction. Then, despite what I want, I'll talk about what I actually expect from the DLC. And then, finally, we'll talk about the implications of the Nuka World World being the last DLC for Fallout 4. So, Nuka World, as soon as I heard that name, I knew it was going to be inside a theme park. And at the time, I was excited, but after seeing this teaser or trailer, I am much more excited. I think this idea fits perfectly into the Fallout universe. With it being set inside a theme park, it opens so many doors for very creative goofiness, and some dark humour, which of course are the building blocks of what we love about the Fallout universe. Also, super exciting if the DLC consists mostly of buildings and structures. This to me is exciting because although Fallout 4 is a big game and, you know, say Far, Far Harbor DLC is a big game, something else that excites me about it being set inside an amusement park is a grand variety of different, I suppose, visual themes. We'll touch on that in a little bit, but what also excites me is it's based inside a theme park, so we should be able to expect a lot of, I suppose, layered places to explore. You know, multiple story buildings, Buildings, trapdoors, secret tunnels and rides, all kinds of super cool urban exploration. Which is something that I felt the base game of Fallout 4 lacked greatly, like there's a lot of vast wasteland distances, which is fine, that's what you expect, but I feel like I never really got to do any urban exploring, although you do go into Boston, there's not really much quest related stuff around there, you kind of have to go in there for no reason. But I like this way in this DLC where we have a big kind of city area in which there's exciting things to explore and we also have quest and, you know, merchant hubs and factions and, and reasons to be in this big amusement park. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun in Nuka World. Now I'm going to read out what it says on Steam, the description of the DLC on Steam. Okay, ready? Fallout 4 Nuka World. Take a trip to Nuka World, a vast amusement park, now a lawless city of raiders. Explore an all new region with an open wasteland and park zones like Safari Adventure, Dry Rock Gulch, Kitty Kingdom, and the Galactic Zone. Lead lethal gangs of raiders and use them to conquer settlements, bending the Commonwealth to your will. So that second sentence, explore an all new region with open wasteland. So it's not entirely going to be based inside the amusement park, there will be wasteland outside. Second half of the sentence, and park zones like Safari Adventure, Dry Rock Gulch, Kitty Kingdom, and the Galactic Zone. Now, personally, I'm pumped for Galactic Zone, and I sure am hoping we see some kind of phaser gun like some Star Trek weapon. And with that said, with all these different zones and like different themes within the amusement park, it opens so many doors for amazingly interesting and creative unique weapons and armor. Just think about it, all of the prizes from all of the rides, the gift shops, all of the mascots and people in costume walking around the amusement park, give all that stuff 200 years, some radiation and some sick technology, and we're probably going to have some insanely cool designed unique weapons and armor. Well, we better. And the last sentence, which um, doesn't really tickle my fancy that much, lead lethal gangs of raiders and use them to conquer settlements, bending the commonwealth to your will. Personally, I don't care about leading anyone anywhere. Conquer settlements, I, again, couldn't give a flying fish cake about settlements. And of course, bend the commonwealth to your will. Now, I don't think that's actually going to affect, like, the base game's commonwealth. I think it just means if you want to be a raider and do some crazy shit, you can be a and do some crazy shit. And I think you're going to be able to do that regardless of what your choices were um, in the base game. Now on Bethesda's website, it basically has the same little description, except there is an extra sentence, which I will read now. Nuka World features new quests, raiders, weapons, creatures, and more. Enjoy the ride. So Nuka World features new quests. That's excellent. That's what we want. New quests. It has raiders. Okay. New weapons. Hell yeah. Give me some uniques. New creatures and more. Enjoy the ride, which I will. So there's my thoughts and some actual official information on the DLC. Now we're going to take a little quick trip into the trailer. It's only about 30 seconds. It's more of a teaser, really. So let's check it out. 
it's all over. Okay, let's stomp that right there. Now this guy, uh, this raider, has some raider armor on, except we can see it's got a different paint job. It's got this kind of Nuka World looking paint job. I actually think it's also different. It's different armor. As you can see, there's a teddy bear on the front there, and there's a couple of bits and pieces on that armor that I have not seen on any raider armor in the base game of Fallout 4. Now because this guy has a teddy on his chest, it's making me think that these different zones in-game might be faction-based, the same way in Fallout New Vegas, the Strip had different casinos, and those casinos were like their own mini factions. So this got me thinking that these different zones within the theme park are kind of like the different casinos in Fallout New Vegas. So this guy right here could be from Kitty Zone faction because he's got the little teddy bear on his chest. Also, he could be from Kitty Zone because his little helmet on the box there looks pretty weird. It looks like a little elephant head with blue ears, some pretty messed up eyes. It's got a little trunk, some tusks. That's pretty kitty stuff, right? So not only do we have new armor in the shot, but we could be getting a little look into the different factions we could expect within Nuka World. The crying, and I can't get old. Okay, stop that right there. Now these three ladies here, they are obviously raiders, they look like they're part of a team, just the way they're walking together. The chick at the front looks like she is in charge. The two people on either side of her have these brand new hooded helmet looking things. Pretty badass. So not only do we have new armor, but again, I think this could be a little bit of an insight into some of the factions. Considering all three of them are women, it could be some kind of like Amazonian raider gang that hang out in the Safari Zone. I'm 99% sure that I am incorrect. But hey, this new Nuka World amusement park has got my imagination roaring. Let's just stop it here quickly. If we take a look down in the bottom right, now, to be honest, I didn't pay too much attention to the bottles in-game. However, I never remember seeing a bright yellow Nuka Cola shaped bottle before, so I'm sure no one gives a shit about this, but there could be a new type of Nuka Cola to drink. Now before he goes off screen, I don't know what the purpose of this guy is, but we've got some kind of robot walking Nuka Cola guy. Again, I don't know, he's just there. Now I can't see too much else in this shot. Now there's this guy in this space suit, that could just be a radiation suit, but it could also be that uh, this guy's from the Galactic Zone. The rest of the Raiders look pretty normal, you know, they're wearing pretty standard Raider looking stuff. I think it is new Raider armor, but, but you know, it's not like some crazy shit that I need to point out, right? If we look underneath the sign for Nuka Worlds, it, through the arches we can see some arcade games. That thing with the circles where you throw the ball into the little circles to get points, you know? If we go a little bit further forward into it, just a tad, we can get a little bit of a better look in there. I think, is that a dodgem card in there? There's a red looking vehicle thing. And there's also a little arcade machine with the holes in it where like, what is it called? Hit the mole, some shit like that. Don't hit your wife, please. Now that's just inside the door. And I mean, we have an entire amusement park to deal with here. So there's gonna be some pretty cool stuff. Okay, now this is where stuff gets really, really interesting. Now they mention different zones and they mention, you know, you get to walk around a wasteland and the new amusement park in Nuka World. But the scale of this, it looks well, well over what my expectations were. Okay, so right near the end here, this is probably the best shot of this amusement park. Again, different zones. I was thinking, yeah, it's pretty cool, different zones. But this looks massive. Now something else that is confusing me right now is that Far Harbor cost $25, yet the Nuka World DLC costs $20. Nuka World is $5 less. Therefore, in my mind, we're going to be getting 20% less stuff, right? Far Harbor, you could play that in about a day, two days. If you sat down on a Friday night and just played all weekend, come Monday morning, you finished Far Harbor, right? There was some quests, there was a really big landmass, but most of that was pretty damn empty. And now back to Nuka World, just judging by this single shot here, I mean, this this looks pretty damn big. I don't think the landmass will be the size of Far Harbor, but it looks like it's like like literally 10 times more full than the land was on Far Harbor. Now you're going to think that I'm endorsed by dragons at this point because I keep talking about the scale. Look at the scale. So we got a little market outside, then we go up above the wall and uh, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna try and deconstruct this as best I can. Let's start on the left. before. 
before we look at the spaceship tower, just before, there is some kind of grey wall and there seem to be trees. A bunch of trees in this grey walled area. This could be Safari Zone, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect with the Safari Zone. That bit with the trees doesn't look that big, so maybe not. Okay, so let's go back to the little UFO tower there. I say little, I mean massive. So this area here is obviously Galactic World. I don't know what to expect from it, I just expect a phaser gun. That's gonna be some really awesome stuff. I've got some kind of feeling that we're gonna see an alien at some point. Anyway, we've got the UFO tower. There seems to be a rocket next to the UFO tower and there's a bunch of giant planet buildings. Um, even further on behind that, there's like some kind of giant white construct. I don't know what that is, but it wouldn't be in the trailer if it wasn't in the DLC. Now, if we move a little bit more towards the middle of the screen, over in the background there, we can see what is obviously the Dry Rock Gulch with those big kind of, I don't know what you would call them those tiered stones that you would see in maybe Colorado. Now again, we're gonna go back to scale for a second because in front of that dry rock gulch, we can see an old roller coaster track. Now look how small that looks from here. The distance between where the camera is and where that thing is, is a lot. There's a lot of space between the two. Now amusement parks don't really have a lot of empty space knocking around. So just think the amount of stuff that's going to be between us and that. And then beyond that with Dry Rock Gulch. I'm telling you, this shot here is making me really overexcited about the size of this DLC. It looks bloody massive. So before everyone starts thinking size matters, let's move over to this snowy mountain here. That's pretty much my entire deconstruction of the snowy mountain, is the fact that it's a snowy mountain. There is some kind of huge like nuka cola thing leaning on it. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Then behind this nuka dude's hand, we can see a ferris wheel. Again, look how small it is. All the way over there in the distance. Now in between the nuka bottle's hand and the nuka bottle's bottle, way, way in the distance, there seems to be another giant nuka bottle like we see leaning on the mountain. Now, if that's the same size as this nuka bottle leaning on the mountain, again, scale. Wow. And behind this sneaky bastard who is covering probably the coolest thing of this shot, there looks to be what is some kind of Disney castle over in the background. Now, although, as you can see in this shot, there's lots of spires everywhere. So a bunch of spires in the distance, you're like, yeah, it's just more amusement park. However, look how cluster they are. It legit looks like some fairy tale kingdom over in the distance. Here, if we go back a bit before that nuka bottle dude gets in the way, we can see it looks like some fairy tale kingdom. That could be Kitty Zone. I don't know, but this is massive. Let's just hope that it's filled with something worth buying. So yeah, wow. That's the trailer slash teaser deconstruction. And I think you'll agree from first impressions, it looks massive. Now, to be honest, I don't know what I actually expect from this DLC. Of course, I know what I want, but I don't know what they will actually deliver, like what they will actually realistically do with this DLC. Now, back to the Far Harbor pricing of $25 and the Nuka World pricing of being $20, it's either super simple and the Nuka World DLC is just a smaller, less content DLC than Far Harbor. Although, again, looking through this trailer, it looks absolutely insanely huge, which leads me to think that it might actually be just a massive, massive DLC. And the reason it's cheap is Bethesda's just going, look, this is it, this is the final thing. You've been good to us, you've supported us, here is the best thing we've ever done for a very cheap price. Is that what they're doing? I have no idea. Probably not. I mean, they're a business. If they made something bigger and and better than Far Harbor, they would probably put a bigger and better price on it, right? So yeah, a bit of conflict there. I'm not too sure what's going on. But all of this leads into Bethesda is leaving Fallout 4. This nuka world will be the end of Fallout 4. As they did say, this is the final DLC of Fallout 4. And then I do believe on Twitter, Pete Hines said that it is the final planned DLC for Fallout 4. And then of course this sparked some speculation, but the fires were soon put out when Pete Hines said he simply did not want to answer for Todd Howard. He didn't know what they were planning on doing. So as far as he knew, it was the last planned DLC. And as far as everyone can tell, Todd was telling the truth and it is the final DLC of Fallout 4. Now, 
once that vault building DLC comes out and then Nuka World comes out, all in all, we're going to be left with a lot less DLC content than Fallout 3 had and Fallout New Vegas had. Now, as Mr. Matty Plays said, it is kind of worrying for us Bethesda based YouTubers because they only release games, you know, every four or five years. So we do rely on this kind of prolonged DLC content for literally our careers to survive. Don't worry, I'm not worried. There's so many things I want to do on YouTube. And missing half the DLC content that I thought we were going to get isn't going to end my career on YouTube or any of the other Bethesda YouTubers. But it is interesting and it makes me think that Bethesda's definitely moving into an area that they've never been in before. You could say that about anything at any time, really, because everything's constantly growing and changing. But they've recently expanded for the first time ever. I think that since Oblivion all the way through to Fallout 4, they had the same team, or at least the same 100 team size. Now that's a lot of time that's gone past for them to have the same team size. But they have recently expanded. I think they've added an extra 30 people, which going from 100 to 130, it's, uh, it's a pretty big jump. You know, it's like you're increasing your team size by a third. So they're definitely up to something. We know they're working on two new IPs. I think it's two new IPs. It's definitely two projects. Well, at least it's three big projects, one of which is the Elder Scrolls 6. Todd Howard did say they're working on it. And besides that, he said they're working on two other projects. And I know that at least one of them, he said, was a new IP. So what happened? What happened to Fallout 4? It was their best selling game ever. And I feel like they've kind of pulled the plug on it. Now, me personally, I don't count those wasteland and workshop DLCs as DLCs. I mean, it's some little add-on thing that should have just been given to people. The Automatron DLC like added a quest or a quest line with like four quests that takes like two hours. The Far Harbor DLC, that's a DLC, okay? Anyway, I'm mumbling now. My point is, I expected five, at least five Far Harbor sized DLCs. So to be given two on their best selling game ever, it's like, what are the, what? What happened? Again, I feel like they're just bailing from Fallout 4. Now this is a double-edged blade because I feel sad, I feel sad for Fallout 4. Like the end of Fallout 4 is in two months. That's the last of Fallout 4. That's pretty crazy stuff. That's pretty crazy stuff. But then on the other side of the blade, they're ending Fallout 4 so they can get to work on these other projects, which is incredibly exciting because that just means that new games from the Bethesda team are gonna be coming sooner. So it is sad to see the end of Fallout 4 but it is exciting to see brand new things from them. So again, a double-edged sword, it cuts both ways. Now, with all that said, I would very much appreciate it if you left some comments letting me know your thoughts on the Nuka World DLC and also your thoughts on why Bethesda's done this, why they're bailing on Fallout 4 at least a year before I thought they would. That's pretty crazy stuff, to be honest. But interesting, they're not dumb people. They're a very, very smart and creative business. So although on the face of it, a little bit scary. I know they're up to something smart. So you let me know what you think as well. I'm very interested to see your thoughts on these topics. Now with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you made it to the end. I sat down planning on this video being about five minutes long, but I know now that it will not be. So again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. Remember, be sure to leave a comment. And if you're a fan of STDs, follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description. I'll see you soon.